and action. Welcome to, gosh, is this our third video class? I'm sitting here next to Luis yes. in the backyard, and it's it's kind of funny. I feel like we're kind of going downhill in that we're going from, first we talked about all these cinematic things like, oh, you have to have the aperture, you have to have the this, you know, you know it's all about the leading lines, and what are the, I, I forgot all the other phrases that we said. <laughs> light rembrandt lighting and everything we talked about that then we talked about how to do a super cheap music video and now we're talking about how to do a music video using what's in your pocket it's almost like we're going backwards but in so many ways we are going forwards today i'm interviewing luis suarez so luis um we've done quite a few videos in fact i want to show you guys a little bit of a slideshow just to give you an idea of of what we've done so far and what he's done so far. So I'm going to go to screen share and give me a second. Of course, you guys just saw this one. What a beautiful name. Who would have thought a music video shot on, on what, what was it shot on? iPhone seven. seven, iPhone seven would have almost 3 million views <laughs> and every single thing, every single part of this music video, was shot on an iPhone except for this right here, which is the moon. That was added in special effects later on. On Fiverr, I think I paid somebody 30 or $50 to do that for a few of the shots, and it kind of made it seem like it was Tatooine, like it was from Star Wars or something. Um, obviously, another video we've done, Fly Away, and one of, the, one of my favorite things about this video is that it's backwards. So... We used a cinematic trick where, you know, this is somebody blowing, bull drying their hair. We have, you know, people throwing things in the air, confetti. We have people throwing pillows and stuff. And we shot it all in, I think, was it about five or six five. takes? Five, five pieces, should I say, not takes. Each one of these took sometimes three, sometimes five takes to get it right, whether it's cracking eggs. And, and at the end of it all, I, I just kind of forced fit it into the different parts of the song. But the, the biggest challenge with this video was figuring out how to, to write the script in reverse and to film in reverse. That's Justin getting a mohawk in reverse with hair coming up. So you know we couldn't do too many takes of that. But little things like this to that took a little bit of brainstorming. Um, how to eat watermelon backwards, that was, that was a lot easier. But yeah, we had an absolute blast. You can see some of these seams that we have. I'll get, to, I'll get you to the next one. And this seam right here was, it took a lot of intention having to get that, that photo and have it made and put on a frame and boom. And then we get to my most favorite part of it. I'm going to fast forward again in just a second, but yeah, I, I think for this scene, this is our sound engineer and yeah, he had a bad tour on sound. And so we punished him by painting him, <laughs> but of course we couldn't do too many takes. He's walking backwards. Everything we do, he's running backwards and everything we do is people walking backwards in order to film it. And then of course, certain things just were super fun at this time. There was the bucket, the ice bucket challenge and the ice had melted that's how you know how many takes we've done and this is the flip boom so yeah this is uh this one won us a lot of film festival awards tell us about that Luis. yeah i what, what year was that like 2014 right i don't remember all the film festivals but at least we won five and we won five film festivals yeah and was official selection like also in like four. And it was an official selection for, so I know we're dealing with some audio issues right now, but five film festivals we won. It was an official selection of four. And uh, it's pretty, pretty cool to think that we shot it all on, that was an iPhone what? I think it's five, it's iPhone five. Yeah, let's find out at uh, the very also, end. Uh, that music video was shot iPhone 5s with no, you know, like you can use another apps to make the video more versatile. But okay. Just the camera built in on iPhone, so it's 
So okay. Like that, you know. Saying it was shot using using no apps, using the built-in camera, um, and we're going to get into what those apps are. But he it was a 5s at the time, so chances are your camera is already ten times better, and and then what they have than what we were working with it was a, a 5s with no effects i'm going to go to some more slides as justin works out some technical issues what's going on justin you got to mute your audio here mute my audio here okay luis was kind enough to send me some photos today mm -hmm. and these photos are some of the stuff we've done so far here we go enter full screen okay so this first one is Luis looking extra handsome <laughs> with his phone? <laughs> Who knows how old that phone was? <laughs> Next one is what we're not doing this video to talk about. There is a famous cinematographer who shot some movies who decided to do a, a movie entirely on an iPhone. What was that? The director is... Steven Soderbergh. Steven Soderbergh. He wanted to show that that you don't need a big camera, you don't need a big this and a big that. But when he did his movie, he used all the big camera stuff, right? Yeah, exactly like that. Exactly like that. Like that. Yeah. So essentially, what we're what we're saying is, we're we're saying don't say, hey, I'm going to do an iPhone video, and then add so many lenses and all these different things to the point where you might as well just have a DSLR. Exactly, and it's more expensive to do that that than buying a Canon. Okay, so Canon. So, uh -huh. And one thing that you and I do for each of the videos, how many videos have you worked on now? 43. 43 with us. 43 Holy cow, I'm getting old. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> 43 in the last two months. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh -huh. Feels like it. Uh, with that, each video we ask ourselves, is this the video to do iPhone? Mm-hmm. Quite often, we decide it's not. And the biggest reason why is the depth of field, the cinematic, the bokeh, the, the you know, if you look at a lot of our videos, you have the, the person in the foreground crisp and clear and the background blurry. And that's something that makes it very cinematic. Yes. Now, you can get that view by using portrait mode as a photo on an iPhone. Mm -hmm. but it's not that easy. You're going to show us how in just a second, how to get that on video. Okay. Now this was the first video that we shot together. I just showed you clips from it. This was our flyaway. It was honorable mention, I think in four and won five film festival awards that didn't get us enough to cover the cost of the video or, or the little, Ziploc bag that we put the phone in <laughs> <laughs> so that it wouldn't get ruined when it was wet or whatever. But um, it, it is cool to think that there are a lot of film festivals out there that are celebrating stuff shot on iPhone. And that's a film festival. You did I indie phone film festival yes. uh -huh. for some time as well. And, and how many people, how many types of submissions would you get? Uh, the last one I did, maybe 80. 80 submissions. That's yes, great. but having like, you know, wasn't like too impressive like now, yeah. you know, right now a lot of filmmakers are doing great jobs. With... Well, if you think about it, um, you can't watch the news without seeing something shot on somebody's iPhone that is then used by the news. Mm -hmm. TikTok, you know, Instagram, Facebook, all this stuff. So so our cameras are, are really changing a lot. Okay, let's move on down. Now, these are clips uh, from from your Scratch the Fate movie, which isn't out yet, but this was this is his labor of love. He wrote the script, and this is him skateboarding. You're goofy footed, huh? <laughs> <laughs> skateboarding for one scene, shooting different scenes on the beach. It, you don't need much now. Now, if somebody is like, "Hey, do you need a permit?" Look at this. We got a guy with sound, two actors, and we have a guy with a camera. That just looks like another day at the beach. All they need is a blanket, and they're good to go. Yes. Are we all right, Justin? Talk into the mic. Okay. I'll get it even closer. There we go. All right. Rarely am I told to be quieter or louder. Sorry. Should I say? Okay, here we go. And um, this is him again using – what is this? This are you, are you doing audio into the phone as well? Yes. 
so later I can sync with the other audio, you know? Okay, so what, what app were you using for audio? Uh, audio Pro, it was that time. At, at that time. Is there anything now that you would recommend? Uh, I don't remember the name, but there is a good one, like the automatic balance of the audios, compressions. Okay. Make it like very cool. Yeah. Okay. There, I'm sure there are many, but we use voice memos from time to time. Mm -hmm. for sound, when I'm doing sound design, I it, like when the guy throws his jacket on the chain link fence for, was it Rescue Me or Backslider? One of those videos where the guy's running. Mm -hmm. I go, I run down to the neighbor's chain link fence. I, I put on my voice memos and I hit the chain link fence a few times and I use that. I use my yeah, this for, for audio for design, audio yeah. design for all the sound effects for like the city before. Right now we have a plane flying over. That one's built in. But yeah, it's possible to use to use it for audio design as well. You're using something there for white balance. Is that some sort of reflector? And did you have to get permits for this filming? No. Nothing. No permits. no permits at all. Yeah. Yeah. No permits is a blessing. This is you on the Dante Gavel, Dante Night Show. He's a, he's a famous preacher and he has a show. He's from uh, Argentina, right? Yes. And so you're talking about you have your gimbal there. Did you bring your gimbal today? No. No. Nope, I bye. couldn't. I couldn't find it. <laughs> I couldn't find it. <laughs> and we'll talk about the gimbal or does he? Do, do we need it in a minute? Okay. This is one of my faves. Woo! We were praying. This was before phones were water resistant. We were praying that that, that bag or, or or whatever you had it in. What was it that you put it in? No, I, at the end I bought the one water case for iPhone, case the space one. Yeah, two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Yes. Yeah. So these these shots were all caught. This is for oceans. That that one I probably I don't know how many views it has. Maybe it has like eight, nine, eight or nine million views. A lot of those shots were shot anytime she's walking, anytime it's underwater. That's Louis holding his breath. No scuba tanks. Yeah, most most of the music videos I always use some iPhone shots, you yeah. know. So uh, Oceans is one of them. Oceans is, is probably the most watched one. We didn't touch on iPhone in Hosanna, um, but a lot of these others. This is our rank and file logo. Uh, I told him to bring his camera. And he said iPhone's going to be better. No gimbal. He just walked forward. So if you look at our latest music videos, The End, where Marcus is walking on the rocks and shooting, and then we go into the lens um, of th that he's shooting from, that was all shot in my parents' garage. That's what it really looked like. <laughs> all right. This is wherever your treasure is. We are in Filipinas. the Philippines, and we just decide, hey, let's do a music video. What's the song? I don't know. What's left on the album? <laughs> Let's do this. And so this is inside a jeepney. This is outside the jeepney as it drives away. That is the closing scene. If you watch the music video where where the the car drives away, the jeepney drives away. There it is. Another shot. This is on the front of the jeepney while driving. That's right. So when I'm singing, leaning out, know your light. By the way, that's why I couldn't sing from inside because it was too too dark right mm -hmm. all right we got a trash truck and that is oh so welcome when you're filming and this is you sitting on the edge now here's one thing that i want to talk about is one of the reasons why we choose to use an iphone if you had a dslr you would have to use both hands mm -hmm. typically unless it's on autofocus right yes you'd have to use both hands and doing this while sitting on a jeepney while driving in the Philippines is very dangerous. Exactly. And so in this case, you were able to hold on to the end, to the edge, to the, I think it was a rear view mirror or something. So you're at least holding on with one hand, sitting on the little, whatever that's called. I don't know. The thing <laughs> that goes over the tire. Yeah. We didn't lose you that day. Thank God. Here's another one. I absolutely love. Um, this was a, a vision that I had of using phones. I, there's this one part where we say anti-social media um, and talking about how, how people are just doing this all the time. And ironically is at the end of it all, our goal is that they'll do that and watch the video and maybe put it down. But so I kind of made this haunting image of, of filming eyes. Did we, and we did all the filming with an iPhone as well. 
Which one? Is the, uh, this is upside down. Yes. Yeah, the close-ups of the eyes and the and the lips and the nose was that. Yes, an that's a, that, those were shot on an iPhone mm -hmm. and then pieced together so you can see down below. Down here you can see me singing. We smoked out the room using a smoke machine. So the cost of this was probably one, two, three, four times ten is about forty bucks plus another fifty dollar smoke machine. And what were the first forty dollars? They were for the the thing, the clip-ons the, the, that the phones were being held on. So, it, it, you know, for under $100, we were able to do this scene. And then in, you'll see in the scene in the video where I actually part those away. At that point, the, they aren't being held by the clips being stuck onto mic stands. They're being held by people that are kind of moving those phones away. And then I break out from my chains and I kind of look like I'm doing something from mm -hmm. Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> <laughs> the people are like what the heck happened <laughs> and if you can see the lighting just a simple ring light there um so that that's a, a cheap way to do lighting as well this was one of my faves the whole video for the majority was shot on on dslr but uh for the skateboarding scene uh, on alongside if you look at your house you'll see we get really close to the feet pedaling we start to reveal we wanted to reveal avion from the foot up to her singing and then and then again from there to to me like it was okay so we rented one of these bicycle pedal little cars and we had band members <laughs> justin and uh, our sound engineer uh were, were really really pedaling hard and then Luis was filming saying, go faster, go faster. <laughs> he was a slave driver that day. Yeah. And then eventually he jumped on my skateboard and he got the shots. Check that out. <clears throat> and uh, this is what you don't see. Again, how simple is this? A phone, a skateboard, a tandem bike. We bought the tandem bike for $100. Spent another $30, $40 in paint. <clears throat> we painted it up. And um, there we go. Another shot. This is from the little bike that they were riding. We did block the bike path for a while. And thankfully, he had a helmet on. Okay, now we're, now we're to the epic one. Now, all the ones we've shown so far are good. But this one, wow. This one takes the cake. That frost was really there on those sand dunes. It's uh, coral pink sand dunes in Utah. This was, this was all it took right there. Now, when you watch the video... You're gonna see you're gonna see her on on this sand dune like from far away and you're gonna see the camera just shh. you know what he's doing at that time? He's being speedy Gonzalez. He's literally running on sand. Trying to and one of the cool things about <laughs> these phones is that the stabilization is really good. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, in that one, I have to use the gimbal, you gimbal. know, okay. uh -huh. it's electronic stabilization yeah. plus the stabilization of iPhone, you know, so yeah. I run like hell, you said, and looks like it's a drone shot. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I, I swore that you had a drone shot and rarely have we used drone shots with you. You, you, um, you make things fly. Here are some shots. This, I love this place. Now, a crucial thing with this, like if you look at our flyaway video, the concept is backwards. So people aren't thinking of video effects. They're thinking of, oh, wow, how did they think about that? You know, they thought to break it and paint it and, and the confetti and the papers and the, all these different things, the balloons, the silly string. Where did they come up with that? In this case, the art of this was in the costuming, probably about $100, $150 for the dress for Avion, the dress for Nikita, and all the frill and stuff, uh, maybe a hundred even or less. My wife is very creative with that. The cost of, of getting out there, we were already on tour in Utah, and we just said, let's take advantage of where we're going. So this is what I want to encourage you to do next time you're on vacation, wherever you are, even in your home area, Google best places to film, best places to shoot to take photos in that area. Um, and then another fun, fun thing to do is, is Google uh, movies shot in that area. 
Mm-hmm. Like I found out there's this place called Branson Cave where the bat, the Batmobile came out of, and it's right over in Hollywood. I want to film there. You know, let's get creative. Is everything all right with the sound? Um, just gotta keep, speaking the mic. keep speaking in the mic. I'll get it closer. All right, here we go. So, get, yeah, get creative with, with the location and finding the best spots. So we were in Utah, and I did reconnaissance for hours to find the best place. And the best place we found, it had these streaks like this. And these streaks are, um, it, it makes, sometimes it makes the background like over here look like bacon. But it did cost us $300 to get to that place by a tour guide. We, we had to get a permit and we couldn't just go on our own. Aside from that, this, this was all free aside from Luis's time. And look at that shot though. And what we have here is foreground. We have movement. And in this case, I think Luis, you could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I think that the iPhone made this video because of the clarity all across. Mm -hmm. So she isn't in blurry right now and the wall isn't blurry or yeah. the background isn't blurry. It's we get, the... it, it, it creates this surreal kind of a feel that we're not used to seeing. Yeah. And this was our entire also, staff. Also remember that helped us the, the, the lighting. Yeah. The lighting is, it was like a miracle. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Look at the clouds above there. Yeah. It I'm was go, a soft light. You yeah. Know? Soft Everything. light. And, and so it wasn't harsh. That really, really helped. And then, of course, we used contrast between wearing white, wearing black. This was our staff that day. If you weren't being filmed, <laughs> Nikita is holding the reflector. We used two reflectors. So, and then we had sound. So I'm the guy doing the sound at that moment and taking the photo because Luis is saying, take a photo of me. <laughs> Here's another one. This was just, just you and, and Christian and Nikita for that. And that shot, look at those clouds. That's the thing we pray for. And quite honestly, guys, you can't, there's just no way you're going to find it. I call it the Hosanna sky. That one shot in Hosanna where Avion's mm -hmm. singing, I sing the King of glory and she's spinning around and the sky is just patterned like that. I love that. All right, moving on. This is all we shot it on. And now we're going to get to how we did it. So thanks for letting me show you what you can do. Now let me show you guys how you can do it. First things first, what kind of phone do you need, Luis, to do this? Every, any smartphone, you know. I know that this, this class is called iPhone filmmaking, but any smartphone right now yeah. has the quality, you know, to, sh to film everything. Yeah, and so maybe nice, not a yeah. flip phone, definitely not a dumb phone. Yeah. But <laughs> if you can make an emoji on your phone, if if you if you have a good selfie camera, um, I wouldn't use the selfie camera though. I would use no. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I want to, if if you are watching this class and you didn't watch our other cinematography classes, at the very very end, we're going to give you a, a way that you can watch the classes that you missed. Uh, not not today, but at the end of this semester. I want to encourage you to go back to those because I remember teaching a class uh, in the Caribbean about how, how we did fly away and how all you need is a smartphone in order to do a music video. And so an artist did that. And when the artist did that, it was so bad because they did it all shooting them themselves. Mm. They're not looking at the, at the camera. <laughs> They're looking at themselves. And every single shot, the way it's moving, it's like attached to the body. And every single shot was the same thing. It was like chest up. Mm -hmm. Frame frame size. Same yeah. frame size time and time again. So what we said in our class was you wanted to be doing full body. You want to be doing half body, chest up, head, maybe super close-ups, and maybe far, far away like drone or something like that. So, And cut back and forth between different ones and use continuity. If the hand goes up, make sure that this hand isn't doing this on the next shot. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So you can use any kind of phone. Uh, probably one of the most popular ones would be Samsung or something Samsung. aside from from this have you ever shot on one of those before? yeah Samsung in Galaxy 8 I yeah. did something and looks very nice yeah it has good quality 
Yeah. Let us know in the comments whether you're an iPhone person, Samsung, or something else. Um, we'd love to hear that as well. And also let us know where you're coming from and get your questions ready, of course, because we are, uh, we're going to be answering them shortly. Okay. So another thing, another reminder, a few classes ago, uh, we asked if anybody wanted to help us with connecting or, or attaching these videos to that we're doing right now. Uh, with intro and outro and then uploading it so that you guys can watch these videos later. And, uh, and two people volunteered. One of them uh, is, is now working on our next music video. So if you want to be a part of our music video team and you know a lot about video, please email us booking at Christsafari.com, booking at Christsafari.com, and, and tell us your experience and how you may be able to help us be a part of our video team. This person's doing special effects. Juan from Bogota, Colombia, uh, for our So Will I 10, 10 Billion Times music video. We're very excited about that. And uh, so you may be able to join us as well. Please do. We're increasing our team. Um, in Moment to Pray, you did some close-up shots with your camera. Mm -hmm. of like bees and things like that. Why is the phone better than a, a DSLR? Uh, it's not better. It's for those the, kinds of shots. Yeah. Uh, the, it's the macro. In I had to use to get the best uh, like close-up shots for a bee or insect. And with the camera, the problem is like with my D it's not DSLR, but it's the mirrorless camera uh, maybe because it's big and you I don't know what happened but I couldn't get something like you know like close yeah. up and also because if you have a macro lens you can do it but with my iPhone I, I I did it like so quickly and maybe because it's not big I don't know what happened but yeah and the slow motion and I get the shot Okay, you got the shot. So let's talk about slow motion and, and, and rack focus. You taught me a trick that I did not know. I did not think that you can rack focus on an iPhone. Um, to give you an example of, of what I'm talking about, there is something called portrait mode on an iPhone. And, and with portrait mode, you are essentially, if, if the person is about eight feet from the camera and they are in focus, you can then kind of it blurs out the background. And I am really hoping that in September when the new iPhone comes out, they'll be able to do that with video. When they do that, game's over for DSLRs. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think so. You don't think so? No, okay. it's, it's, it's too much memory. Remember that portrait mode, it's a photo, a static photo that the software duplicate the photo out of and cuts, you know, oh, really and make does. out of focus the other one. Wow, so it would be yeah. to do that Per, with 30 frames per second or whatever would be too much. Yes, okay, so um, so here I, I want to share with you a video, and then he's gonna he's gonna tell us how he got this. He just shot this at the beach. By the way, if you follow Luis, you'll see that he does a lot of uh, a lot of shots pretty much daily on his phone. And here we go. This one, there's nothing spectacular about this until you realize this is an iPhone. Watch this. Okay, I'm going to talk it through now. So what we see here is we see sand in focus at the bottom. And let me see if I can't close this out. Are, are we good, good with sound, dude? Okay. All right, good. So, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so we see sand in focus and a seagull out of focus. Right, the sun. And then seagull in focus, sand out of focus. That's how we do it. So, um... Now, Luis, guide us through that. At the beginning of the shot. Yeah, so I'm uh, very close to the sand, you know. So I focus very close to the sand. And then casually, the seagulls was, was walking. <laughs> so in that moment, I just move my, the focus point with my finger. And the iPhone do the rest. And that's the uh, out of focus, uh, the rack focus. But 
I had, you need to use a slow motion because you know, if you do it like normal speed, like 30 frames per second, the, the focus is so quick. Oh, it you know? jumps. A high jumps. So if that one is uh, 120 frames per second, it's a slow motion. So it's very slow. So the, the jump of the focus is a slow. So it looks like you are doing with manual focus, you know? Okay, it looks uh -huh. like you're basically doing this. But you need, you need for, to do that, you need to be close to that object, like Very a plant cool. or an object, you know, everything, your your hand, and then everything is go out of focus okay. at, the, or at the background, and then you change the focus point. Okay. And that's a rack focus. Rack focus. I like that. Okay, mm -hmm. so there's a, there's one trip, I, one trick, should I say, 120 frames per second, and you you very very close to something you how do you get that focus do you tap on it once or do you hold it down or what do you do? Uh, yeah and just tap one whatever do you want to get in focus just tap it okay so if i'm doing video like this um if i'm in slow-mo if i want luis to be in focus i tap on him now there's something you told me that was that, that i that every single time i do any sort of video i hear you saying in spanglish to me you have to hold down your finger until it does this and at that point you have what what is what is that called you you lock the you exposure? lock the exposure yeah okay so that means like the phone is not going to think to make it clear in that moment you know it's yeah. just phones are it, Phones are very, very good, especially the iPhone, at adjusting light. So if I'm indoors and it's dark, it makes the room brighter. But when I walk outside, it adjusts the exposure, is that mm -hmm, what it's called? Mm -hmm, yes. Forgive me. I don't know these terminologies. I just <laughs> know that it does, it does this jump from one to the next. And if you're filming something... Um, sometimes you don't want that jump you you want to be able to so so you hold down the screen until it goes chick chick kind of the squares do this flash mm -hmm. and when that happens then just shine it at the sun shine it down move it around and see if it changes if it doesn't change then and only then do you film right yes mm -hmm. now you use a steady cam sometimes a glide cam a gimbal whatever you want to call it but more often than not you're not doing that and instead, you're, you, you have another technique. Show us that technique. Yeah, one, one thing is like the new smartphones, not just iPhone, it has very good uh, stabilization, digital stabilization. But, uh, but if you don't walk well, you know, if, if, the, if the shot is with movement, but you walk like pack, pack, pack too much, like yeah, hard, like you know? Me, like a giant. Yeah, it's going to shake. Mm -hmm. But so... One trick is first hold it like this. Don't hold like no. Don't grab it like this. Don't. Okay. It has to be like this. This is like a a suspension. Human a suspension. suspension. Human suspension. Human suspension. So and grab then, your phones and do this. So and, you're doing basically two fingers. Yes, here, like this. And then you're gonna tell me to lock you lock. And your then something. and then your elbows goes closer to the the body. Okay. So that is a. Uh, <laughs> give, give a round of applause for Justin, who's Thank you, just Justin. killing it on it's technical the light stuff is right the now. Sun is yeah, the light, the light is. But the problem is, is you're looking at me, and so you're looking off camera the whole time. So I th <laughs> I'm pretty sure they said, "How I'm looking at the camera? Bring it over here." But they don't realize that lighting is crucial in, in and of itself. Okay. Yeah. So then your uh, your elbows close to the to the to your torso to your body, yeah, torso, and that's make. Like a tripod, human tripod. A human tripod. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take mine off of here. And okay, so I've got this. I put my elbows in, and mm -hmm. then I use two fingers on each side. Yeah, and, and try like just I barely touch it. You know, touch. barely touch it. So like you don't hold on too strong. Uh -huh, exactly. Unless you're in, and then in you the walk somewhere. You know, and then you walk doing this. Okay. Okay. Now what he's showing me with his foot is he's doing this as he's walking. So you kind of walk like that. Now, one thing that we do when we're filming you that nobody really knows because they're, they're not seeing it, but you're usually walking backwards. Mm -hmm. If you like, let's say I'm walking towards him in Kibera in, in Kenya. 
and so it's not paved. It's rocky. It's bumpy. So somebody's got their hand on your backpack mm -hmm. or your the or the the whatever the collar of your jacket, and they're holding on to you like a a mother lion would to a cub, just like. Urgh. And then they're walking and with their arm almost completely extended, kind of pulling him, and they're calling out what's <laughs> well they're like gully curb step up step down watch the hole avoid the rock they're shouting that stuff out while he is just trusting them it's kind of like your faith with jesus <laughs> yeah you just got it uh, we did it in the what is the trails the train Tracks, the trail train tracks trail tracks and that's even worse because yeah. you know you yeah, have yeah those... there's there's these big old holes and stuff uh -huh. yeah we did that. And, and you need to maintain the the, the composition the composition not too much shake so it's a pain but yeah. you know i will say that when you think you have it do a few more takes yes always because you will chances are you will only get better unless it was that miraculous shot when the bird flew by or the butterfly or the this or that where you can't recreate it i would encourage you to try and try again because every time you do you'll adjust and you, the worst thing you'll do is not use it but the best thing you'll do is you'll improve because this is muscle memory exactly so one of the hardest videos to do and something that we're praying about doing is a one shot video mm -hmm. an iphone is probably pretty good for that would yes. you say i would like to do it you for know? stabilization purposes for the fact that you don't have to edit it afterwards oh Siri, <laughs> um, I want to try something. Hey, uh, Siri, can you beatbox for me? Here's one I've been practicing. Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots. I could do this all day. Cats and boots. And cats and boots. <laughs> boots and cats. <laughs> so your iPhone is good for more than just filming. <laughs> boots and cats and boots and cats. <laughs> so we use these for Cocopo when we were just getting off of a plane, landing on a little strip, and then all of a sudden these warriors were coming at us with machetes and clubs course we figured that it wasn't they weren't really there to kill us they were there to to greet us but at that point oh grab my camera oh grab my lenses oh pop in my battery oh put in the sim card or whatever oh get it ready okay is the lighting right you don't do that stuff what do you do instead take your phone out and shoot yeah take your phone out swipe up in my in my case i take my phone out I swipe up and boom, you know, you hit it and you start filming immediately. I would encourage you to not film this way, but to film this way. If you want to use it for a music video or for anything, I just, this whole vertical thing just. Mm -hmm. That's for Instagram. That's, that's for Instagram. Stories, yeah. That's for, uh, yeah, but it's not my favorite thing to do. So yeah, one of the reasons why we like it is a f there's a few things. The stabilization is great. The clarity is good. How how much can you film on? Is it 2K now, or what is it? Uh, right now it's 4K. You can all, be 4K on on. Yeah, all the uh, smartphones. All 4K. the smartphones are yeah. 4K. That is better cinematic quality than than any camera had three years ago. Yes. So yeah, what would this compare to a few years ago in in DSLR? Okay, most of most of the music videos we shot in on Africa. I used uh, maybe thirty percent of on iPhone because you know the the moment. Yeah, I have to grab it and documenting all our video so updates as I, well. So then I compare in on post production editing. Yeah, with my DSLR camera and I can, you cannot notice it, you know when. Okay, so you're you're going back and forth from. Correct me if I'm wrong, but. You're using a DSLR for, like, Mark, sing here for uh -huh. the first verse. And we do multiple takes. But then all these shots of the kids playing or the Maasai Or the monkeys. And the they're... monkeys or whatever, yeah. So when that happens, in the, in the heat of the moment, you grab your phone, mm -hmm. you use your phone, and then you're cutting back and forth between those two. Is it hard to cut back and forth between those two? In, on editing? Yeah, in editing. No. And it, that's the, it, it looks nice. That's why I'm telling you this because the quality now, 
it's almost the DSLR. The only limitation you have with the smartphone is you won't have the out of focus, you know? Out of focus. Because that's optics. That's not the sensor and that's not a digital thing. And or that's, bokeh. that's you, lens. Bokeh as well, right? Yeah, uh -huh. that's the lens, it's optics. And iPhone doesn't have that because you won't have a thing here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that's the difference. But then looks beautiful. Yeah. Assuming that this video makes the cut, uh, we, we're working on our next music video, or one of the next ones is called All Things. We used a phone, and we took a prism, which is just a well, piece crystal. of glass, yeah piece of glass cut in a different way and we put it up next to part of the lens and so it shows all these refractions and distortions and you may be duplicated or triplicated or and it shows a sign from over there and a tree from over there it shows all these random things and it's and it, it's almost a kaleidoscope effect mm -hmm. and it was done just by simply doing this putting something over and you can do that with all kinds of different things. I've mm -hmm. seen people use water bottles, um, glass, glass. Yeah. yeah, get creative. So there are things that, that can be done in that way. And of course, you know, like we mentioned, underwater with oceans, a nice location, like what a beautiful name, a good concept <laughs> or treatment. I think that that's something that I learned from Benjamin. His wife right now is translating in Portuguese, <laughs> Erica. Hola, sorry if I'm talking too fast. E I E. Um, mm. So uh, I will speak slowly. But we learned from what he said. So much of it is preparation. If you prepare in advance, if you scout the location, if you write out the treatment, it, and you you make sure that those things are taken care of, obviously you will have a better quality video. Unless, of course, you're filming. Uh, something happening on the mission field that you can't reenact later. Mm -hmm. So um, what app do you use or have you used on your phone? You mentioned in Flyaway there were no apps. It was just the camera. Mm -hmm. That was a 5S, Yes, iPhone 5S. With the 7, iPhone 7, which was quite a few generations back from what I'm holding in my hand, um, with the iPhone 7, for what a beautiful name, you used an app or a program. Tell yeah. us what that is. That's the name is Filmic Pro. Filmic Pro. Yeah, and that makes the iPhone settings, video settings manually. So you can lock the tempe tempe temperature. Temperature. Huh? Temperature. Temperature. Yeah, temperature. Um, you can lock the exposure, you know. So you can move the ISO actually. Okay. Uh -huh. And then what, what else? What is ISO for those who don't know? ISO is like the sensibility of uh, of this of the sensor. You know, it's like the plate where the light come in and hits mm -hmm. and com and that converts in in information. So the ISO make that sensibility more to the light. Or where is no light, you open digitally that sen sensibility so, so, and grab the lights where is no light. Yeah. So essentially, within an iPhone, there are certain things that you don't have control of, and it's giving you m the ability to control it more. Yes, exactly. It's, you convert your iPhone like in a manual mode. In a manual mode. Now, do you does it put another lens over here, or is it no. all software? It's just an app. An app. Just an app. Uh, just an app. Filmic uh, Pro. Filmic Pro. And now the new one for the iPhone Pro is very cool because you have three lenses, right? The, the, the new iPhone. So this app, you can shoot the, with the three lenses at the same time. So you, you can grab the wide shot, the medium shot, and the close-up mm -hmm. at the same time. So that's a nice feature it has, yeah. That's the one, right? Filmic Pro? Yes, Filmic Pro. Okay. Yeah, we. I know I, I had that on my phone as well. And also that app has the Filmic Pro remote. So. Oh, tell me about it. So you can like, you know, on set, you can grab your 
uh, your iPad and you can see what I see. And you can do the focus in your iPad. Wait, wait. T rewind again? I can do. I have an iPad. Uh -huh, so I'm shooting. Bluetooth. It's Bluetooth, connecting to uh -huh. yours. So, so now I can see what you see? Yes. And oh. you can do the focus. No, I can do the focus? While I'm doing the, the uh, movement. You wouldn't want me to mess up your shot? <laughs> <laughs> no way yes so now with that can you rack the focus mm. with filmic can you can you at least take things in and out a little bit more yes than... yes if, okay if it, i to work the focus you see the lens here so if i put the lens here mark and i focus in this yeah everything is out of focus and then i just move my just uh Focus in the in in you know that branch yeah, over there. Just touch it. So that's make the auto the rack focus. You know. Okay. So well, so well in iPhone just works from macro to wide lens. Doesn't, okay. Mm -hmm. So hypothetically, what you're saying is, I have tried if to I get, if I put this. Oh, you're not seeing this. Sorry, guys. If I take this and want it to focus on the chair. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Wow. Okay, so if I shoot this video now, and then you, and if I'm, if, if I'm gonna lock the the ISO as well. So if I shoot it in slow mo, I if I tap it in slow mo, and and have it on focus, I click it, and then I go to you. I can then mm -hmm. take it. Okay, I have to take it away from it though. Okay, mm -hmm. I see yeah okay yeah so try that guys try zooming in or, or getting close to something well no but remembering on iphone just work from macro that means very close up to an object to wide okay you know it's the only the only way to do the rack focus effect okay the rack focus effect for that is to do that now there are some other specifics uh, real quick for filmic pro i'm guessing they can just youtube it how to use it how much does the app cost i think it's ten dollars what that's cheap it's okay. cheap and yeah and all the tutorials are on youtube okay uh, so. a bunch of tutorials uh, and it's easy to use okay so um with that in mind let's talk about different things that you would use for like you sometimes you would say hey mark uh, film this, but make sure it's at this frames and make sure it's at this or make sure it's at that. What is your preferred frame rate for filming? And how do you change those things? How do I change those things on my phone right now? Okay. Uh, I'm, on, so, I'm on, I'm clicking on. Uh -huh, so go to settings. Okay. Go to settings. Go where is the video. Okay. Go to video. Or where is, it says camera actually. Yeah. Okay. The camera. camera. I'm just going to search on the top camera uh-huh then did you find it maybe not <laughs> ever since steve jobs left <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe it's not there are you finding it on yours yes okay we'll just just keep guiding and and i'll, I'll pretend like i'm there already photos okay, i'm there see. camera it's right okay, under so photos. you go to settings right camera click on mm -hmm. then you go to camera okay and there's preserve settings there's grid Aha, uh -huh. then you go to record video. Record. Okay. Oh, I can then record stereo there. sound now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so record slow mo, record video. So on, under record so, video. So do you have the 1080p 24? Right now I'm oh, at 1080p. Oh, you have 4K at 24 frames per second. Yeah, I, these are the options 720, don't ever film on 720 uh, if you want to do something with it. There's 1080p at 30 frames. 1080p at 60 frames. Mm -hmm. By the way, the difference between those are how many photos it takes per second. Per second. So 30 kind of makes it a little more cinematic. It's a little slower. Um, 60 makes it really high quality video. You want to do a more frames per second if you ever in post production want to slow something down. So you don't want to slow down 30 frames per second. Yeah, exactly. It'll look 50. 15 frames it'll be it'll be popping and and, and jumping yeah. versus so so you want to do For 60, a slow motion at least 60 at least sometimes 120 that would be the preferred yes. right 
Okay, which we don't have the option here. So I have, so what would you recommend if we were to film a music video? We're here in my parents' backyard. There's um, a gazebo uh, out here. I'm going to show them the gazebo and ask them if they can rem tell me which music video was shot there. So what would you recommend if we were filming a music video here? The 4K at 24 frames per second. 24 frames per second it looks more cinematic for some reason. For the eye, it looks more like non-natural. If you use 30, it looks more like digital. And we don't want that, right? Uh, so I suggest to always use 24, 24 frames per second. 24 is what you want. Yes. So 4K, 24. That's nice. It, it's. It, so you it, know why it's 24? In, why? In cinema. Cinema. Uh -huh. Because it looks unreal. It looks unreal. Unreal. Uh, Surreal would probably be the best word to describe it. Surreal? It, it kind of makes it look... Like it's not natural, you know? Not natural. Yeah, surreal. Almost. Mm -hmm. or, um, and 30 looks like normal. 30 looks normal. Well, that's why in video looks very... 30 looks like video, you know? Like you see, oh, it looks, it looks weird. The old camcorder that I would get, like we, we filmed our first music, first two music videos on, what frames per second would they shoot on? Which one? Like an old camcorder from like, I don't know, let's Lower say like 2000. Two thousand. Oh, no, you can you can have twenty four. It would be twenty. Second. Would that be twenty four or would that twenty four frame per second? Start in in with big cameras on. Okay. On so you would Hollywood. say you would recommend twenty four or four K at twenty four frames per second. And with that in mind, I would also recommend that you use. Oh, if you don't have four K in your phone, you can make twenty four per second with that app, the Filmic oh, Pro. The Filmic Pro can do that. Can do twenty four. Twenty four forty eight like it's the double speed you cannot have 48 here no way yeah um actually 48 it's i shot 48 on uh moment to pray you know though that the slow motion yeah it's 48 because if i do more is going to be like too much, you know, like uh... let's talk about about our trick which we've used on Yeshua, we've used on Oceans, we used on what a beautiful name. We sped up the song mm -hmm. to double time. Yeah, 60. Where's I love? <laughs> They're singing like that, like a chipmunk. And spread sped sped it up, double time, had the singer sing it. What a beautiful name. She's yes. doing that. And Nikita's dancing to double time. Mm -hmm. And same thing in, in Waymaker. She's doing the streamer. Talia's doing the streamer in double time, and then we slow it down, and it just seems even more surreal, almost dreamlike. Yeah, exactly, dreamlike. And um, so how did we do that with Filmic Pro? Same thing, just set up to 60 frames per second or 120. But 120 will be so hard to, to sing, you know? Yeah, 120. So it's double because it's, if the song is slow and you double it, it's going to be like little squares, you know, like and you have to, she has to sing it. It's soft, it's, it's difficult. And then you, you slow the, no, you, what you do, you slow down. No, you put it fast in, 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 in the, the audio is fast and then you slow down the video. Uh -huh. and the video is slow, is slow down and then you do the opposite in, on, on editing. Okay. So the video is going to be faster and the and the song is lower right and so that's how you match it on editing it was a challenge for you to sync so we would have to do segments at a time yeah. small sections you don't want to do the whole song for some reason though though we work out the math it doesn't really work out yes and so you want to you definitely don't want to because it's actually it's not 30 frames it's 29 po point hey, something that's for the problem okay okay so what about color correction um and is well if, actually, any, actually you know in what a beautiful name i i didn't do you did oh and how many film I festivals just, yeah, I, just, I just did a little bit of saturation <laughs> your saturation a little bit because i tried to what? to to create something you desaturated it hmm? <laughs> what yes so so that's one real plus about these cameras is it's it, it gives it vivid it's a color. vivid yeah it's yeah. a vivid color 
Graphic color. And I have to desaturate something in other parts. Just bring up the shadows, and that's okay. it. That's my color correction. Nice. So there, it's less work. In it's comparison less, yes. to a Sony camera that gives you this kind of gray, flat something, and it's just like, ah, it drives you crazy trying to get color correction. You're trying to make something out of almost nothing. In mm -hmm. this case, you actually had to bring it down a little bit. I prefer that. So that's that's a plus. Are there any other things in the setup? Um, do you do like auto low light FPS? Um, is there anything else that you would do for for the record video in setup? I don't. No, is... I always do that because if you are going to use the camera in uh, the iPhone camera, it's going to be automatic everything. Okay. So that's why you cannot change too much. So Plus... the most important thing, guys, is to hold down that camera image on that on video to so that it looks like this sorry okay you want it to do that where it's locked and it'll say right there when you do it sorry i gotta do it again it'll say a e f lock or something like that what is it called let's see let me do it again and it'll say it a e slash af lock it'll have mm -hmm. that right there that yellow thing so af means auto focus auto focus uh -huh. and auto exposure and auto exposure so you lock it so you, uh, when the singer is moving towards you and he has black shirt the camera is not going to say oh black we need to open uh, you know yeah so it's not going to open the problem maybe there is the focus Okay. But but uh, yeah, you you can you just you just need to get confidence of what your eyes see with your yeah. brain and try to figure it out in the moment. So that right. is that is the most important lesson we can teach you today on that. And then beyond that, there's another tip that he's taught me that I love, and that's if you hold down, you can Tell me that that swipe thing. Oh yes, that's the exposure. Okay, so how do you do it? Show, show so, the camera. Yes. Okay. Okay, I got it. I got it. So if I tap on it, and then there's this little thing on the right, I can go up or down. down. So you see how dark it gets versus up, how bright it and gets. And I recommend always to go a little bit down, like dark a little dark. bit the image, because in post production, you then you, you can. You can bring up the shadows. Wow, you can almost do a fade to white or a fade to black. <laughs> yes. That's, that's the exposure, yeah. Okay, let's talk about um, what you would edit on. In your movie, which is a labor of love and a labor of hate because it's so much work for you, mm -hmm. you set out to not just film on your phone. You set yes. out to do audio on your phone. Mm-hmm to do even sound design through the phone? Uh, no, sound design, no, but yes, the, the music. The music, music, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, to, to edit it on the phone, what apps would you recommend for editing if they're going to edit on the phone? Let's say I'm on okay. tour and all I have is this and I want to catch, I want to do video blogs. I know I used to do it. I And I, I haven't done those video blogs in a while, thanks to people like you and Benny and Josh, who have just been so awesome with helping me with that. But it was a lot of work. So you drag your photos in or pull from the library to that, and then you pull them to the left or the right. You maybe do the transitions, add a title. What, what would you recommend? Okay, for my movie, I, I did Adobe Premiere. Uh, They have an app? Yes. What? So then you edit, and then you export the HTML, to, and then you grab it to in your computer, and everything came uh, is together in the on your computer, you know. No way. So it's back, it's back and forward with the computer and the and the back and forth, yeah. And the and the phone, but now there is a new one from Adobe from Adobe Premiere. It's, What's it called? It's Rush, Adobe Premiere Rush. Adobe Premiere Rush. Now, yes. if you have the the plan go ahead and show them that if you have the plan with adobe like we do where we're paying monthly mm -hmm. does it come with that does it include that or not do you know uh, i i i don't know the okay. one i used two years ago yes 
Okay. I did. I I, I didn't pay it. Okay. But this one, the Adobe Premiere, I'm I'm seeing it, and it has a lot, a lot of new features that look so nice. So you can edit a portrait, a portrait or landscape. Mm -hmm. You know the videos because if you if you notice that if you go to iMovie, you cannot sh uh, edit your story. You know, the like yeah. portrait mode, you cannot edit that. But in this one, you can do that. Okay. And because now a lot of people are doing a lot of uh, Instagram videos yeah. and and so it's it's nice also to I all they like you said daily I always do something you know with the nature when I go to walk try to to film flowers and stuff but yeah. I do it in landscape mode so yeah. so people can see Can we shoot in horizontal and then have it quality for landscape for I mean, for vertical for stories like this let's say you you go and you shoot today on your walk mm -hmm. uh, a, a caterpillar or a mm -hmm. butterfly can you then add that to your stories so that it is vertical and and still have the quality so how you're going to do the, the vertical uh, is there a way to import it and have it and zoom it in or something so because no you no, cannot you can't it just it's going to make it like that on a it's vertical it's going to be uh, like you're going uh, to zoom in and it's going to be like pixelate I, I wish that there was a way because i really can't stand this vertical horizontal yeah you, you have to think yeah you have to make it for your instagram or you're doing documentaries you know you have to do it or okay. horizontal yeah um another thing i would recommend if you're filming especially 4k uh, if you have a, a phone that uses Google, get use some sort of Google Cloud or whatever. And with with us, we use we have an iCloud for backups. And essentially, what that means is that my videos go to the cloud, so they don't fill up my phone. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we mentioned this before, <laughs> but I have quite a few uh, photos and videos on my account right now. As of right now, I have, um, let's see here, 99,000 reasons, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. It just, yeah, there's there's literally hundreds of thousands of photos and videos that I have. And um, it, I do that. Okay, there it is. 80, 86,000 photos, 12,500 videos. Oh, wow. I couldn't fit all those on my phone. And so I use the iCloud. And with that in mind, I'm not too worried. And I also have a phone that has a lot more space, space on it. But with that, I'm not that worried because it it does it holds an image on the phone, but it actually doesn't save the entire video. It pulls it from the cloud. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that's something that's crucial if you're dealing with space and stuff. Um, so we talked about stabilization. We talked about what size to film it in. Um, we we talked about like do we need a gimbal or not do you, would you go back to the gimbal in the future using an iphone or would you the just... problem is like having a gimbal for me is the, the same thing like having my camera my D, my dslr or the other camera it's another big thing to yeah, yeah a lot of stuff so for me the iphone is the it's like it's a small like ready to go and i like yeah. that you know ready to go so if we are going to plan a music video yeah. and shoot it on iPhone, I'll use it, you know, because it's a planned yeah. video. But when I'm walking and on tour with you guys, I'm always ready with my iPhone. Yeah. If you see, I always, when we are in the in the car, I always they shoot with my phone, always. I'm, yeah. And then I, I, I film you singing with my other camera. Then when I go back home, start editing. Then I start choosing the best shots yeah. with my iPhone and try to match it. And yeah, so for me it's easier that way. I I love to the I love the versatility. Is the, versatility, the word? Yeah. versatility of the phones? It's yeah. already in your pocket too, mm -hmm. and you're using it so often already. Obviously, battery is, an issue, is another issue. <laughs> yes. And heating, overheating. Watch out for that if you're in a really, really hot place. 
Um, we're going to get to questions now. Before we do, I just want to say this. All of these classes are built so that you can grow and then go and use these giftings for Jesus. There's so much stuff out there to use your talents to make a lot of money or to do this or do that. But I want to encourage you to be creative for the creator and, um, and to do it for Christ. And in doing so, I just um, use these things and then, and then pray and ask God to give you a vision. Ask God give you a, to, to give me a, an idea or a treatment or this or that. Come over here, baby. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> my, yeah, come on over. Say hi to everybody. This is my beautiful wife, Avion. I know you guys know her. You've seen her in so many videos, but uh, there we go. We're. <laughs> we're talking about about the iPhone, about shooting on the, on an iPhone versus other videos. Is there anything you'd like to add or, or say? Uh, I guess um, use a lot of creativity. You have to use a lot of creativity. Use a lot of creativity um, to to carry the, the vision of, of it, because well, you're using a lower quality thing, but it's not much of a difference to me, <laughs> yeah. except. The depth of field is not there. Yeah. So, so use a lot of creativity because the depth of field isn't there. Um, and, and do it with excellence. Yeah. yeah. Marry a good song with good with great ideas and and run with it and give it to the Lord. Do it for the Lord, I think. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Love you, baby. Love you too. Thanks for... <laughs> All right. So there you have it. And now to your questions. We have a question regarding Osmo Mobile. And that's from De, De Stefano. Um, have you ever used Osmo Mobile? Yes, it's the gimbal. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm. It depends. I I don't know if he's saying the gimbal with it has the camera in. The... I have the Osmo Pocket. Okay, and, so it's that and one. We we tried it for the Asante Sana music video. I didn't really know what I was doing, and you didn't like the shots that much at the end of it all. There yes. is a cool thing that it can do with like time lapses and things like that, but mm -hmm. I still think that that this is this is your best camera. Yeah, it depends how you use everything because with the Osmo, imagine a shot through the flowers, you know? Yeah, that's true. Like it's a a point of view of a bee. Yeah. So if you use it in that way, yeah. you know. Because it's a, it's a small one. It's a small thing to... Yeah. So maybe, yeah. So yeah, it could every, be good. Yeah, everything has the, the purpose of it. Or if, like, it's a fly in a table, so you are here and then... And then go from another side to other side. Yeah. So I, I for that that purpose, is nice, you know. Or skating, skating shots. Skating shots, yeah. I have for, in the wheel, you know, and you're going... And then put... Because it has a good uh, is a gimbal. Yeah, awesome. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's. So whether you're using a Galaxy like Bill Flurry is using, um, Android, is there a difference? I don't even know. Um, I've I've always been an iPhone guy, but you can use this incredibly powerful camera, and 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 shoot a lot of stuff there. So here we go. Okay, so let's get on to questions. I'm not going to be able to hear anybody ask me questions, so I'm going to have to read them. So what is the basic equipment that you need to, to film, let's say, for an iPhone? Basic, like, let's go and do a shoot right now. What do you need? You need two hands, two eyes, and one iPhone. <laughs> I would add to that, if it's night, um, those lights. Yeah, night. The, some of those Actually, lights. Actually, don't shoot iPhone at night. iPhone at night, yeah. Don't do it. Just don't yeah, do it. Yeah. That's a really good tip. I'm glad mm -hmm. we brought that up. Yeah, dark, it does not do well in low light. Are there any any phones that do well in low light? Yeah, the, the Galaxy, the Galaxy. Samsung yeah. is a good one. It's good one if you add light, you know, if you paint with light, when it's hard light and then you lower the exposure, it's going to look nice. I remember. But you know, it's why you are going to why you are going to have a lot of lights, cinema yeah. lights, and then you using an iPhone. It's I'm reminded of when we did the first Noel and it was like instantly I wrote this song and within like two days we were filming the video and you're like, What are we doing? I'm like, I don't know, I'm just gonna go to Target and get a crazy outfit and let's go down to Candy Cane Lane and 
and we didn't have the right lights. And so we asked, we got, we got a crowd around us. So you told everybody to get out your cell phone and to turn on their lights. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And so everybody's shining their light. <laughs> it was yeah. so funny. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you can get, there's so many things you can do with your phone, including lighting the subject if it's done right. But I would say a reflector and I would say some great ideas. And what I've said before, not just a good song, but some sort of speaker or something too. So oh yes, yes. For audio purposes, so the, the boom, person yeah. can hear. I wouldn't. Don't use the same phone you're filming on to play the song. You can't do that. No. I wouldn't use a different phone unless it's it's using some sort of Bluetooth speaker because a phone simply isn't loud enough. There have been times where we were so ill prepared. I use my phone and then put it in my pocket. And I'm trying to hear my pocket. It's just not yeah, you recommended. Have to use, a boom. use a boom of some sort. Some sort of Bose is what we use. It's a, it's a pretty expensive speaker, but it has a nice bass response as well. So I would recommend something like that. So you have your lights. You have you, you what, your two hands, your two, your two eyes, and your phone. You have a great idea, a great song, and a great costume. Um, that's something again that sets our videos apart. Okay, so I have an iPhone 11 Plus. Any tips on how to use settings or any apps recommended? You know what? Why don't you let me borrow your iPhone 11 Plus for about a year? I'd like to. Um, <laughs> I'll give it back to you in a year. Um, I, 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 I still have the yet. 10. I <laughs> still the. I still have the 10. You have the 10. Yes. I think I do. I do as well. <laughs> I. You know what? To be frank, I don't know. Um, I. I I don't know the difference. I know that there's an extra, there's extra lenses. Yeah, no, it looks it looks nice. But I'm going to wait for the 12. You know, I never buy the the next one, the next one. I always you, wait you two. Yeah. I, I so I'm buy, 10. I'm going to to wait for the 12. I get one each year. I'm on the next plan, mm-hmm. so I get one each year. But I've, I, yeah, this year has been a weird year. <laughs> yes. It's been a weird year. All right. Ethan Bradley says this. I have an iPhone and basically am a beginner. Do I need a Mac computer to edit it? No, you do not. You can edit it on your phone. Can I use a PC? Yes, you can. Why would you want to use a PC for anything in the world? That's my question. Unless you like viruses. This is the year of the virus. Um, What do you recommend in general to film with an iPhone? Oh, again, two hands, two eyes. Mm -hmm. Uh, An iPhone. Um, You don't need to edit on something. Now, it depends on what your end result is. If it's a really pro project product, I would recommend you get somebody else to help you edit it. Um, Somebody else who knows how to use Premiere Pro, Final Cut. What's the other one? DaVinci? DaVinci is for color correction, but you can can edit on DaVinci too. So uh, something like that. If you want it to be legitimate, um, at some time, you need to get somebody else who knows more than you do. If you notice me within Christ Christafari, everything that I do, I try to surround myself with people who know more about what I'm doing, more about this than me. So I have the Luis, I have the Benjamin, I have the Justin on keys, I have the Times on guitar, and and everybody knows more than me in what they're doing. And if you surround yourself with people that are smarter than you, you will learn, you will grow, and people will think you're smart too. <laughs> and also remember this app, you know, Filmic Pro? Filmic Pro, yeah, use that app. Why do you prefer iPhone versus a GoPro? That's a really good question from Ethan. Uh, let me, Filmic Pro, you can use it on Android and iPhone. Okay. So, yes. So you can go both. So you can go both, yeah. So yeah. start learning this app, guys. And there's a bunch of uh, tutorials on YouTube. Okay, bunch of bunch of tutorials. It is not as easy to do that app as it is to just point and shoot and tap your screen, right? It, but it's easy. It's easy. It's okay. easy. Okay, so iPhone versus GoPro. My question would be: Are we going underwater? Are we jumping off of a cliff? Are we attaching it to a drone? Are we going mountain biking? iPhone versus GoPro, what do you think? It's very different, completely different. I first the well, you now the the ones we use was wide, you know, the wide shots. So it's too much wide. 
So yeah. if you go closer to you, deforms your your face. It deforms your face. But now the what the the new ones you can do different like okay. uh, settings, so it looks more like a camera. But I want you said if it's not necessary, like you said, in water. For water, it's beautiful. Like you go into the water yeah. shots and. Oh, actually, the iPhone, you can do it, too. Now, you can go into water, you know, and shoot. Okay, can you really take an iPhone 11 underwater? Mm -hmm. Yes, oh but no, gosh. I think no more than six feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I have an Apple Watch, and, you know, I take this in the ocean. It's made for that, but I, I would be so scared because this these things are expensive. Like I said, I'm on the next plan, so maybe someday I would be, like, bold enough, but I would be scared all my voice recordings or other things that hadn't been backed up would be gone. Okay. And everything is, like, again, you know, it's, each camera has, every uh, like, very a personality, most like that. That's no? true. Yeah, every so camera. So GoPro, the new ones, like the number 7 to 8, has mm -hmm. a very nice uh, stabilization so imagine that going in, in through the garden you know yeah like it's a, a snake like it's oh, like nice. a snake see that you vision know? that's that kind of those kind of visuals i love so that's how you use that camera or oh, the one you bought just bought it what is the name uh, 360 something right did i bought it didn't i yes did it arrive <laughs> yeah it, it arrives it's there for the i don't know when we're going to use yeah, it you need to use it because yeah. i yeah <laughs> we we like to that's something i want to encourage you in, in as well is don't just invest in learning but from time to time invest in gear and um and each time you do that you'll be more prepared so um okay moving on what advice would you give about lighting in different environments closed open places etc i think we got more so into this in our cinematography one yes. quickly on lighting um we talked about a silver uh, the silver side of a five in one reflector would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, you use the black side. If there's too much light or reflection on the person's face, we use sometimes a kind of a see-through white one to block the sun directly um, to create a cloud effect. You use a white one or even a white sheet at your feet will kind of bounce that light towards you. Mm -hmm. But the silver one is probably the, the, the stand in the, the one that we go to the most mm -hmm. and we want to create like for instance right now my face is not that lit well and so maybe you would want to light one side and and um Luis has some pretty good lighting and that's backlighting and that's that's something that we like to do also as well we talked about in the cinematography is if you have the light behind you especially with an iphone you can you can play with that light when i did when I did Solomon Jabby's I've Got That Feeling music video, I did the entire thing on my iPhone, probably an iPhone 7 or, or 8 at the time, and I played with the light. I went from I had the light behind the mountain and then did this. And so when it, it I would show the light and I wouldn't, the only negative with the iPhone is you get a little green dot. You can't get rid of that. But you do get these kind of... That green dot will be like nice glare in a really nice in, the in a lens. nice camera yeah. that would be it that would be it yeah yeah but with some reason they compress it's like it compressed the yeah. dots you know i wish i wish it didn't do that but it is what it is okay um when do you use attached lens and other equipment is recommended uh like for stabilization etc i would say if you're going to be running or doing something that's, that's extremely vigorous with movement with an iphone Mm -hmm. The iPhone stabilization is very good. If I'm doing this, it'll be pretty consistent. Um, and what stabilization does is it shoots a bigger shot and then it cuts in and kind of adjusts for you. And so uh, if you're doing a lot of movement, do the stabilization. Um, and, and, and any add-ons, we're not really encouraging you to do add-ons to it. Maybe a gimbal. But um, only if you're really planning on it. Like if we do that one take music video, we would definitely use a gimbal of mm -hmm. some sort. And uh, we would definitely plan out every single step. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Leia says, have you done any shooting in a 
One Plus phone. That is a brand new thing I've never heard of before. Yeah, no, we don't. Sorry, we have not. Okay, can you discuss, Brian says, any differences between the less expensive gimbal that uses the iPhone lenses and the more expensive one with its own lenses and their quality differences? Okay, this is one of those things where there's an expert on YouTube for this. I learned this from our old sound engineer. (laughs) He knew everything, and I realized he didn't know everything. He just knew how to Google it and watch it on iPhone. Some geek out there has compared them, probably multiple ones, this versus that. I I would type in what I'm looking to get, and then the word VS, versus, and it would compare. But I recommend just find gimbals for smartphones, and $200 is... Uh, a good one you know like, like dji yeah. dji do uh, make some some nice i don't know the name but it's uh, you know dji is the one who does the uh, the, the drones drone. yeah Maverick. they have one for mavic or whatever yeah they have one for uh, smartphones and it's, it's very cheap like 180 180 dollars okay. so dji would be a good gimbal you would recommend and mm-hmm. i would compare i would just I do this all the time. I was just doing this last night as I was buying plugins. I'm working on a new album, going to get some new plugins and learn some new sounds. I don't want every album to sound the same. I don't want every video to sound the same or to look the same. And so what I do instead is I continue to grow that stuff. And so I would search best iPhone gimbal, best Android gimbal, and then look at a comparison of them. I would then Mm -hmm. compare people who give comparisons and choose and then look at your budget and decide uh, what percentage of your work is done in post post production. Great question by George Smith. Oh gosh. I would say with flyaway very little because it was five shots and a few extra little clips. Uh, I think we realized that we needed one more extra shot that we didn't shoot in Hawaii, but or two shots that we shot locally. Um, occasionally we grab some B roll, but I would say a good music video would take two to three days of filming if we're dedicating those days to the mm-hmm. filming and five to seven days of editing if we're going to have a perfect video. Would yeah. that be a good... End? Yeah, the, depends of the editing, you know, because the last one oh, gosh. took me a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, you didn't shoot the last one, so you had yeah. to... Had a, but the last one is called... Lock and Step, check it out. It's out right now. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, please, because uh, we come out with a music video every two to four weeks, and we're really excited about this one. This was in New York City. But the challenge is is we'll film a section of the song in three different areas, and each section will have five to ten takes, and then that could mean 30 things we're comping down, making a composite from and what we do is we A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We, a, we compare A to B, get rid of one. Compare C to D, get rid of one. We, we go all the way down and pick the best. And then once we have that best shot, then we go to the next shot. So, like, I can do all things through your strength, cut through your strength, cut through your strength. We would do that. And then the first one, whatever's the best, we can't go to the same shot. So that one we can't use. Now are we going to go from close to wide? Are we going to go from close to closer? And then you figure out what's the best. And sometimes we keep one or two at the bottom that we mm-hmm. still liked just in case. But it does, it takes, I mean, for that, I can do all things through your strength. Just for that, to watch that 20 times. Mm-hmm. <sighs> is maddening and that's why Luis every once in a while just wants to quit filmmaking (laughs) he's like i just want to shoot i don't want to edit some people somewhere out there is that person who just wants to edit please join our team Mm -hmm. (laughs) Luis will pay you in empanadas okay here we go (laughs) and hugs and handshakes here we go um if you shoot videos on iphone how much space do you take up and how quickly do you download it elsewhere to save that space and not clog up the memory on the phone that's why i would recommend using the the air whatever that what's that called again cloud so the problem is if you don't have a good wi-fi, Wi-Fi you, it doesn't go to like, the cloud so what we do at the end of 
of a film day yeah, is yeah. we'll use a, a laptop like I have my laptop right here. What you didn't see me do <laughs> was when I wanted to show that that slow mo video from the sand to the seagull. I just airdropped it to my laptop, and now it's in both places, and now it's safe. And then if you really want to be safe, get yourself a, an SSD. Is it SSD? Mm -hmm. SSD external. SSD right. external. I think it's called a USB-C. You get yourself one of those, a hard drive that won't break because it stops spinning, um, a solid-state drive. Get yourself one of those or two, and then back it up from the computer to there, now it's on three places. Who praise the Lord. Okay. All right. So moving on down, can we do this with any phone, Android? Yes. Praise the Lord. Although I am not an Android. I am a human being. Um, how much? Okay. Next question. How much iCloud storage would you recommend for video for the video space? See, this is where, and this goes back to the other question that I didn't answer. I'm sorry, but. I don't know what a five five minute song can be a gig, right? If it's four K. Uh, no, it's oh just one video you said five minute long, one video in four K. Yes, it could be a gig. A gig each, that's, each each shot. That's a lot. Right now we're trying to figure out how to get the video that we're doing <laughs> with one in Bogota to Bogota, and it's. And one take of it is a gig, and there's a lot of takes. So with that in mind, keep in mind that you may even want to go through your phone on your camera and edit and, you know, and shorten it and keep that or delete things off your camera that you don't need. But it, it will add up quickly. And that's why you want to make sure you back and up. And also think if it's necessary to shoot 4K. What is the purpose yeah, of 4K? Exactly. 4K gives you more details. And well, but, but believe me, 1080 is, 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 is perfect for everything. So far, we've released maybe almost 85, 90, almost 100 music videos. Almost every one of them, except for maybe one or two, is 1080p. Um, and yeah, uh, 4K always, you know, you know, right now we have a problem because it's 4K and that's, is the uh, 4K, the problem is always the post-production. Yeah. You post need to have a very fast ca uh, computer. Yeah. If you are adding plugins, color correction, 4K is so heavy. Yeah. And also if you want to send, like right now we need to send some footage yeah. to Bogota, is going to take us a lot of organization and stuff. So 4K if you need to, but keep in mind it's going to take a lot of taxation and on, on your computer. And we bought the most recent Mac Pro, the one that just came out in December. We bought that at around Christmas, and we did it for these music videos. And even with the top, top, top one, Luis is still having issues with 4K. So... I will say that 4K is the good thing about 4K is when we use 1080 from 4K, you can zoom in on that if you want to. You yeah. can't do that from 1080 to 1080. It will be it will be pixelated. It will be it won't be truly in focus. It won't be clear. Okay, if somebody could translate, and that's why now is 6K, 6K. The because, next one at the top. Yeah, the next imagine one. that. When shooting, that would be great. Okay, here we go. Um, when shooting in the dark, I places, used a. Sh uh, yeah. That the translator. Okay, question. yeah, Connor. If Connor, I can't hear Connor, so it, the best thing would just be to. You can't hear me. To um, post the question below. Oh, Connor's gonna answer it. Okay, I'll have to turn up my volume. It's gonna be weird. Okay, go ahead. When shooting in dark places, the image is grainy. How can you fix this problem on the iPhone? When shooting in dark places, the image is grainy. How can you fix this problem on an iPhone? I think we addressed that. Don't shoot in dark places. <laughs> oh, you can you can use a uh, it's a plugin called oh I don't remember. Sorry, but it's a plugin. Like it gets rid a little bit of that grainy, but make soft the make kind of out of focus some some 
son partes de vídeo. So. There are some weird shapes and things that happen, anomalies that happen in blacks and browns and dark tones on, on a phone that I would just completely avoid it and, and get the lighting. Mm -hmm. get the lighting right I, I, unless it's you know you're trying to catch something that that is happening on you know on the fly you 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 know i would not do that somebody says i use smooth gimbal have you ever used one of these smooth is what we use for our dslr um i haven't personally used it but yeah smooth is a great one as well you haven't mm -hmm. used smooth have you it's smooth, uh, gimbal, smooth, yeah. Mm -hmm. Smooth, you've used it, okay. Mm -hmm. It's for smartphones. For smartphones, yeah, okay. So yeah, definitely recommend that. Okay, how do you know if there's going if there is too much going on in the shot? Well, if you have to ask your ask that question, there probably is too much going on in the shot. The composition should be that person. Um, and you need that attention to detail as well. I would I would like to have to encourage you to have somebody behind you. And looking at, at everything else going on, we talked on the last class about how we got this one perfect drone shot at the end of Two Harbors. And it was flying over the band, right over our heads, practically cutting our hair, and then going off to this island, only to realize that there was a man wearing <laughs> a thong, a literal banana hammock thong, walking out of the ocean right there. I was like, oh my gosh. Attention to that. We didn't catch that until later attention to that is crucial too much going on less is more focus on on that primary person and get the angles right for that person again those are things we dealt with in the other class is early in the morning or late in the evening good for iphone filmmaking i would say the best hours are until about 10 30 or 11 and after 3 p.m., depending on the on where you are and when the sun sets, but the worst time would be around noon. That's when the sun is just too harsh. Unless you're in a place where there's a lot of shade, a lot of or a cloud covering, like we had for what a beautiful name. Would you agree? Yes, I now, agree. We talked in the last class about how Benjamin preferred morning because uh, you know you can always go a little bit longer or take a lunch break and then come back and film, I prefer to sleep in. <laughs> Do you add lenses to the iPhone? No, but you can. There's there's yeah. macro, there's micro, there's this, there's that. But these phones have such good lenses now. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to add something to it. Um, would you add anything to that, would you say? I, w I won't do it. If you want to add stuff to your, like lenses to your smartphone, I think it's going to cheaper to get a DSLR, you know, like the Canon Rebel, the T5i. They are cheap, like four hundred dollars, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it has very good quality and a lens that is going to make a lot of work, you know. So don't go to that way. Yeah. So if you're getting lenses, just, just use the DSLR. There is a, there is one like cheap ones like you clip into the phone. Yeah. Those ones are nice but because you can experiment. Most of them are uh, macros. So We you... did that with like a fisheye lens, I think. Mm -hmm. Avian got a few of those. We didn't end up using them, though. Anything else that you have to snap on, <laughs> we usually and ne never do in the heat of the moment, you know. Yes. <laughs> and each one of these, the, the next generation of iPhone mm -hmm. solves that problem. So, yeah, the um, iPhone, the iPhone 11 Pro is, does that. It yeah. has three lenses: the wide and the uh, two times zoom lens. Yeah. So it's a uh, zoom, uh, optic uh, zoom, because it's not the zoom like digital zoom. Like it's going to deg degrade your image. This one is very nice. It looks so nice. Yeah. And makes the out of focus too. You know, in the yeah. in it the close uh huh makes the, yeah it, the, the new iphone does it yeah for video for the uh, the zoom lens no way so you you there is a two plus that's a lens that means okay it's so two plus it's like you have in a zoom lens mm -hmm. so if you i go closer to you and i do a close-up like here mm -hmm. makes out of focus a little bit the background not oh. like dslr but at least makes something special you know Okay, well, that's that's great. That's a great tip in and of itself. And the wide lens, 
also mm -hmm. do, doesn't distort. Most of the wide mm. lenses always distort the, the, if you have a, a, a tree here or a column, it makes something like this, you know? Yeah. But this one, no, it it's works so, so nice. Yeah. Okay, and uh, is how do you record professional sound with an iPhone? Great question. Yeah, uh, there is a new no, not news, but is there's the Shore. Shore is the, sure, the brand, yeah, right? Uh -huh. Shore, and you just it's like a pill. Put it looks yeah. like a pill. I have one of those, and just put, put it, it here, and it looks and for interviews it yeah. works a lot. Yeah, and with my iPhone, which is I believe the 10, I'm not sure if it's a 10 or. Uh, but it, I can film in stereo, and so I can use stereo audio as well. It's pretty good. You just got to make sure you're not rubbing the microphones or scratching against it when mm -hmm. you're doing it. But um, do we know anything about, the, for Android, the grip? Is the grip good to use? I don't know what the grip is. I think it's something, yeah. There is a bunch of uh, handles now, but yeah. I think it's the, that one. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's great. Everything okay. like you can hold the camera easier for you. It's, it works. Okay. Is it good to buy at least five mobile phones while shooting for multiple shots? I would say if you don't have friends, yes. I would never do that though. To buy mobile phones just for the shots, no. No. I would just invite your friends out. I would pay them in pizza and I would, I would say, will you help me? I would set up the shots and then make sure that, that they know what they're doing and holding it right, both hands. And well, you uh, know, even in, in even in big movies in Hollywood, they don't shoot with five cameras. Even yeah. if they have the budget, they use one or one two. At a time. Yeah, maybe two. And it's because the angle. Yeah. When you choose a shot, it's because how it works, the background and the lighting. Yeah. So if you have a friend shooting white here, it's not going to work, you know, because maybe you look different. There is something like it doesn't work. So that's why it doesn't have sense to, to have five iPhones shooting something, you know? It's yeah. So there you have it. Last question. And this is, I think, my favorite question. <laughs> oh, William, you're the, you're the best. Um, what's it like filming in your 40s? Uh, I'm 47. How old are you? I'm 48 now. Crap. <laughs> I'm, I'm 35. 35. 35 plus 10, probably. Um, <laughs> so, uh I love it. I I think that this is the best time in the world. Yes. In the history of mankind, as, aside from the future, to film. Um, when we started filming, our, doing our first music video, it was really either horrible camcorder <laughs> or film. Film was really the only option. And then it was TV cameras. Those were horrible. And then, I mean over the last few years what has changed i i mean this right here what's in your pocket is more powerful than what they were using to power star trek enterprise back in the day mm -hmm. what they were using to get man on the moon what they're you know it is uh, and it, the kind of computer that my dad's company that he used to work for would have to use that would take up a huge room just to process something you have it all right here. And so I guess my question is, what are you going to do with it? There's no better time in the world, in the history of the world, to film and no cheaper way to do it. And so now are you going to just keep swiping and looking on what other people are doing? Or are you going to create? Are you going to innovate? Are you going to be creative with the creator inside? So that's our class. Uh, we have a few more classes coming up, coming up, and Connor's gonna pitch that. What was that? Okay. And um, and I just want to ask you guys if you would help us, if you would partner with us. And here's why. It, it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and um, well, a lot of money to do the kind of work we're doing. Um, these master classes are free for you but they're very expensive for us. Um, the gear we had to buy, the people we had to get involved, all the volunteers, all the everything. Um, we can't do it on our own. We are full-time missionaries, meaning that we're not taking pay for this, 
but we are paying a lot for this. A lot of our time, a lot of our effort, a lot of our energy. And um, I would love it if you've been blessed by this class, if you've been blessed by these classes, please uh, attend all the other classes. We'll be sending you videos of this shortly, but if you've been blessed by it, would you consider blessing back? Would you consider giving part of your first fruits to the Lord? Um, last year alone, we saw almost a quarter million decisions for Christ. And we captured it all through video as we went to, to share with the world and to inspire them to grow and inspire you to go. As we continue to go, would you help put some fuel in our tank? Put some, <laughs> help us fill her up. And uh, in doing so, you can go to Christafari.com forward slash donate. That's Christafari.com forward slash donate. I'm going to appeal to you today to click on the most needed fund because there are so many tremendous needs. Just this afternoon, we decided to feed 100 families in the largest slum in Africa. Um, and that's going to be no small task. But with your help, it's going to be possible. And you were there, Kibera. How can we not do that in this COVID crisis? And so when you support us, you help us support others. You help us train others. You help us send out others. So grateful for the 60-plus of you that watched today and for those who are watching wherever, uh, would you partner with us in that? And also, if the donation link doesn't work, right below it, there's a PayPal link. The biggest thing we're praying for is monthly partners, people who are willing to say, hey, I see that they're working every month. I see that they're going somewhere or ministering to people throughout the world every single month. I want to partner with them every single month so that we can continue to do this. Thanks so much. Yeah.